So you know how old home videos and movies from the 80s and 90s have that iconic look. If your parents or your grandparents once had a video camera with a cassette tape, I think you probably know what I mean. And yeah, I'm talking about the VHS look, so I just love it. I find it very nostalgic and it's very unique, it's own way. VHS look actually refers to the recognizable visuals and auditory characteristics of a video content recorded and played back on VHS tape, which stands for video home system. This look is often associated with a sense of nostalgia because VHS was a dominant format for home video recording and playback from the late 70s through the early 2000s. When we take a closer look at it, first off, the resolution is way lower than what we are used to today. Everything looks a bit blurry and not very sharp, kind of soft and grainy. The colors are usually more muted and not as vibrant and they often appear a bit washed out. And you also get these random specks and lines across the screen, which are like little imperfections from the tape itself. Plus, everything was in that old school 4x3 aspect ratio, which is more square compared to the widescreen formats we have now. Also, a lot of people are into this VHS aesthetics nowadays. It's very popular in music videos and films to give the retro feel. And that's exactly what we are going to do today. We are going to try to emulate the VHS look in DaVinci Resolve. Recently, while I was out with my camera, I captured some footage of the surroundings, like the buildings, the ferries, uh, and the people. And I plan to use this clip because I thought it would be suitable for this tutorial. People are hanging out and fishermen are fishing. It's a lively video with lots of colors. So as usual, I'm going to work on the DaVinci White Gamut color space. My color management is set to DaVinci White Gamut. If you're not familiar uh, with the concept of DaVinci White Gamut, I talk about it a lot in my previous videos. So I strongly suggest you check my other tutorials as well. Let's create a node and move it towards the end. I will create a simple node tree. Our first node will be DaVinci White Gamut. Our last node will be Rec 709. Let's quickly complete the transformation from the log. In the first node, the input color space is Sony S Gamma 3 Cine. The input gamma is Sony S Log 3. The output color space is DaVinci White Gamut. And the output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. In the last node, we are going to apply another CST. The input color space is DaVinci White Gamut. The input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Output color space is Rec. 709. And the output gamma is Gamma 2.4. All right. Now I will create three more nodes. The first node will be for my balance. The second node for contrast. And the third node for the saturation. Let's make some quick adjustments using the primaries. I'm in the balance node. I will lower the offset like this. Let's also lower the gamma. I will increase the gain a bit. Let's lower the lift as well. This is before and this is after. I think we can increase the gain a bit more. Yeah, this looks better. We can warm it up by using the temperature slider. This is before and this is after. We can continue with the contrast nodes. I'm selecting the curves menu. Let's quickly create an S-curve by adding a few points. We can also increase the contrast a bit from the primaries. You can see that we are gradually achieving a standard look. Now let's make the colors a bit more prominent. Select the saturation node. To speed things up, I will use the global saturation option in the HDR wheels. This is before and this is after. Overall, it looks pretty good right now. Let's also view it in the full screen. Yeah. We have completed the standard adjustments for our footage. Now we can start creating the VHS look. I'm adding two more nodes. One will be blur and the other will be sharpen. Select the node, go to the blur menu and increase the blur level a bit. Then in the sharpen node, increase the sharpness level of the footage. I'm doing a before and after. And as you can see, we are achieving the slightly blurry but sharp feel typical to the VHS effect. Now select the Sharpen node, click on the color menu in the top left. Under the Nodes menu, click on Add Splitter Combiner node. This will add three parallel nodes. Each of these nodes represents a color channel. The first node is red, the second is green and the third is blue. 
When you make changes in these nodes, it will only affect their representative color. I'm quickly writing their initials, select red channel, click on the sizing menu, select node sizing and use the pen and tilt sliders to change its position. Let's view it in the full screen again. Okay, this allows us to manually create a color shift, which is essential for the VHS effect. Let's adjust it a bit more. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Now let's move this node group down here. I am adding two more nodes. I will add two effects that are available within DaVinci. The first is analog damage. Let's add this to the node and quickly name it. The second will be film damage. Let's name this one too and make its adjustments. When you first add them, all effects will be enabled. We will make them more usable. First, reduce the vignette, then adjust the white balance from the temp shift. I'm turning off the changing dirt option. Decrease the film blur in the first menu all the way down since we will adjust this in the analog damage effect. This is before and this is after. With this effect, we have added a nice warm tone. Now we have reached the stage where we will make the settings to achieve the main VHS effect. Select the analog damage node. At the beginning, you will see many presets based on the era. Let's go through the presets briefly. Well, 1960s black and white is indeed quite accurate. You have many options like 60s, 70s, 80s. I want to continue with the 90s preset because I like the colors on this one. Let's open all the menus and take a look. I will change a few settings. First, I'm turning off the CRT framing. Let's increase the vignette a bit. Under the broadcast signal menu, I'm increasing the chroma noise. I'm increasing the detail loss. You can increase or decrease the noise scale from here as well. Let's just leave it around here. I'm also adjusting the chroma detail loss setting a bit. Now let's look at the color and exposure settings. Actually, these stages can be completely customized to your preference. You can adjust the vertical lines from the scan lines menu. The chroma noise seems a bit too much. I'm lowering it down a bit. Lastly, I will add one more note. I want to use the color slice tool to adjust the colors, density and saturation. I will reduce the overall saturation a bit and then I will increase the red density. Yes, as we can see, cyan is a bit more dominant in this footage. So I'm lowering its density and increasing the saturation. This is before and this is after. Let's adjust the tone of yellow a bit as well. Maybe we can change the white balance in the balance node. Let's decrease the temperature. We can also do this using the temp shift in the film damage effect. Well, I think it looks very nice. Now let's take a still of this and try it on other footages. Okay guys, creating this effect is really fun. It is used a lot in music videos and many commercial works nowadays. It can add a very cool vibe to your own videos. So I definitely recommend trying it on your own project. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. And if you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and take care until the next video.